There's a lot of mid-range smartphones out there. Asus has put their hat in the ring with the Zenfone 3. It's got a stunning design, it's all glass, but is that enough to make it stand out in a sea of beautiful, affordable handsets? Let's find out. Let's take a closer look at the Zenfone 3. This 5.5 inch Snapdragon running smartphone is a beauty. When it was released back in June, its sudden glass chassis had a screaming premium. Then Honor came out with the 8 and suddenly a design that was not so mid-range suddenly was. Don't get me wrong, this big bezeled beauty does stand out from the crowd by running a mid-range processor that is fast enough to handle most tasks with ease. The UI never stuttered and big games like Need for Speed that came preloaded performed admirably but did take a little bit long to load. Software wise, there's actually not that much wrong with Zen UI. It's a smart, clean iteration of Android 6.0. The only fatal flaw? It's got way too much bloatware. Thankfully, you can uninstall a lot of it. When I first went hands on with the Zenfone 3 in June, I thought Asus had a real winner. It's a beautiful smartphone with a vibrant display, fast enough processing, great battery life and a camera that's capable of really good photos. It's half the price of flagship devices, but half the price doesn't mean that it's half as good. I think mid-range smartphones in general are about 75% as good. It's the little things where you can tell that it's mid-ranged. Aggressive multitasking is a little bit slow, and low-light photography could use some work. The Zenfone bridges the gap with its premium glass finish while providing half-decent low-light photos. If price is a consideration, and you don't need that extra little 25%, the Zenfone 3 is an easy decision. Even when you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of the OnePlus 3 or the Honor 8, it's $100 cheaper. It's just as beautiful and has really stand-up all-day battery life. We are talking 35% at the end of the day while I was using it aggressively. It has a fingerprint reader that's 95% accurate and it's really fast when it does work. USB Type-C, which is reversible quick charge, and a decent camera with OIS. The downside is the camera's good, not great. The bezels are massive. It's a fingerprint magnet. The sound isn't great. It's tinny and not that loud. And there's so much bloatware that if you don't disable and uninstall most of it, the notifications grind your initial smartphone experience to a halt. This is a small price to pay for a dual SIM support and micro SD card slot for expanding your memory. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or hit me up on Twitter at Nicole underscore Scooter. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on great videos like this one. As always, I'm your host, Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks. Bye.